So you're probably wondering, how can I write clean senior TypeScript code? And how can I avoid junior developer mistakes in TypeScript? So in this particular video, we're gonna see what are the TypeScript junior mistakes that you should avoid to become a better developer. So we all love using TypeScript instead of JavaScript in our projects, where like TypeScript makes our word as developers way much easier, way much simpler, and it's like widely being used. As Chris in here for the NPM download, there's like 31 million downloads per week. So that small kind of info tells you how influential and how big and important TypeScript in our lives as JavaScript developers or as web developers in general. And screws in here is just like a diagram from 2017 compared to right now about TypeScript and other ones like Python, JavaScript, and Java. Screws in TypeScript in here, it made a huge leap and it just actually are adopting this new awesome language in their like paradigm, in their like ecosystem and projects. So the first mistake that I see a lot of developers actually fall into is they don't even know what the unknown type in here or the unknown keyword actually does or how it works in TypeScript in general. So you're not familiar with these two types. So I'm pretty sure like a lot of you heard about any before. So the any type in here is actually you can assign literally any type for that variable. So when you say like a user any in here, which is a variable I'm assigning an any type to this. And that simply means in the TypeScript word, TypeScript, go ahead and turn off or just completely remove the types checks for this particular variable. So TypeScript is not going to guard you. It's not going to go like, you know, take your hand and move you or take you to paradise. It's not going to do any type checking when you assign any type to a variable, which is from just like the sentence I just said right now, you can clearly tell that this one is a pretty bad thing to do in your code. And even I did it myself many, many times, but any, you should always avoid using any. But the unknown type in here, what it tells TypeScript actually is, I don't know what the type of the variable currently is, but I will know when I'm trying or when I will use the variable. So I don't know currently but throughout the code, like later on the code, when I try to use this variable and use it and access like, you know, if it's an object, I try to access properties inside of it or something, I would know exactly what the type and I will assign a type to it and what use it. So to better understand this, let's say we got this simple example. We got a web page in here, we got users, and we got like a list of users. As you in here, I'm just having like a list of users in here with their IDs, their name, and I'm just fetching these users from a local database and a local API. So this is basically the code for it. We got a fetch user, we got a state to set the users, then we can just use the users and render every single user as simple as that. So the user we're going to fetch in here, this is actually the interface for the user. It has an ID, first name, image, whatever it is. And there's actually a second interface that extends the user, which is an admin user. Now for this admin user, we got two new properties added into this, like the token and the add new user method, which is simply like the admin has this like specific token for him. And he has like this method that allows him to add new users because yes, he has admin privileges. So for example, when I'm fetching a simple user, like which is one user with the ID one, I get a response. And this is actually the bad approach. For this approach in here, I'm doing response JSON, I'm doing a wait, and it's returning me the user, as simple as that. But remember, the response in here, we don't know what the actual JSON is. It's gonna be a promise, and it's gonna return any by default. So the bad user in here, this particular object, if I go into it, as Chrissy has type any. I mean, whether I add any in here or not, it's always gonna implicitly has any type. Okay, so why is that bad? If I, for example, in here, try to uncommon this code, and let's say I got this bad user. Remember, this bad user has all of these on top in here, and I can access stuff like, oh, I can do dots and I can access, but there is no enter license for this, and it doesn't exactly know what the properties are. Or some of you might say, oh, I want to just like, I can do this uh, user, right? And I can easily access those, and it would work fine. But there's actually one problem. Do you know, for example, oh, this isn't a user, right? But we want to check if this user is an admin or not. At this point in here, we don't know if this is an actual user or an admin itself. For example, obviously, because the user is actually the parent interface in here, we can still use the, like the I user interface in here for both of these. But still, it's not going to be like perfect thing because sometimes you want to use the admin stuff and when to access like the token or the add new users in here. But now for the good example in here, we're doing like, oh, I want to get get good user, I'm assigning unknown to this. So that's actually pretty good. Because right here, I don't know if this is actually an actual user, or if it's an admin user, right? And I want to check in later on. So what actually is going to happen is I'm going to create like a type guard and and type guard and TypeScript are something that returns, like for example, objects is an administrator, which is like an argument, is an interface. So just basically a Boolean, but much more than a Boolean. For example, here what I'm doing is actually checking, oh, if this is actually an actual object and has a type in of an object, then I check if a token is inside of an object. That means, oh, this is actually an admin. Otherwise, I'm just gonna return false in here because this acts the same as a Boolean. So now using type guards, what I'm doing is actually is admin user. I'm giving it the actual user in here, which is unknown, remember, but TypeScript uses 
using the part of VS Code and actually doing the inference in real time while we're coding just to boost your productivity and make it way much better developer experience. So what happens in here, if I uncomment this code and try to click on it and see exactly what the properties it does have, as Chris it has a token and it has like add new user method because it knows we are actually accessing an admin user. And if I hover over this, there you go, it automatically detected and inferred that this is an admin user, not a regular user. And the same thing, if you do want to do a raise regular user and check in, oh, this is actually unknown. First, there's Chris in here, it's unknown, but inside of the scope, it's an actual IE user. Let's Chris in here. Now for the second operator, or the second keyword that you're probably not using your code is the is operator. All okay, right, so to take a simple example in here, for example, we've got a type species, which has a cat and a dog. And an example in here, got an interface of a pet. So a pet can actually have, uh, you know, multiple like species, whether it could be a cat or a dog. Now I got a class in here, which is an implementation so it implements that actually it declares species and the species obviously is going to be a cat. This is actually a class cat. And it has a couple of methods. It has the meow, it has jump, it has so basically here just like console logs. All right, so I said, remember, we got this class cat in here. And that's exactly what's doing. Now we want to define two time guards. And remember, time guards are actually function that tells you whether this current object you're passing in is it is this particular type or not. So you can use it better in TypeScript and you can enable type checking for it, as well as you can have better user experience with into license. So for example, here we got the function pet is cat, which is returning pet is cat. So all I'm checking is the current pet object has species equal cat, I'm returning this one, which is the same thing as a boolean. But on the other hand, for example, we got this particular method in here, which is like pet is cat boolean, which returns a boolean, which is the same thing. I pretty much so let's say here we create a new instance of a pet and here I just did a pet a cat. So I want to check in here. So the bad approach, which a lot of us actually use, which is using the pet is cat boolean. So if we want to check if the current pet is an actual cat or not, I'm going to use this boolean. Stuff. So I'm going to do pet is cat boolean p. Remember, this is going to return boolean or not. If it's true, it's going to work fine. But if we actually try to access this, Chris, it's going to give us an error. Meow does it not exist in type pet. And that particular method in here, um, Chris, it just tells us, oh, this doesn't exist because this doesn't tell TypeScript the VS Code, oh, this is actually a type of pet and it doesn't work for perfectly. So the only workaround for you is actually to go ahead and do type casting. So you can do p as cat. So you're telling the compiler or, oh, I know better than you, P or this object's in here, pet object in here. I'm pretty sure it's actually a cat and you can easily cast it and it can actually basically can use whatever method inside of it. But the better approach is actually to use the pet is cat, which is the implementation of the pet is cat, which is using the is keyword. Now for this one, all I'm doing is actually doing, oh, pet is cat, remember here I'm passing it a pet, but it immediately knows that, oh, this is actually a type of cat. And here I can immediately access a meal inside of it and without any issues. And this one is an actual cat. The third mistake is you're not basically using the satisfies operator. So this operator was introduced in TypeScript 4.9, which is just recently introduced and recently released. And basically, in the basic sense, this operator allows you to match some type to an actual expression for inference purposes. So let's use this particular example. For example, in here, I got an interface, which is a custom image. And a custom image in here can have like a data, you know, like base 64 image or something with the width and height as numbers. Simple as that. So it's going to look like something like this, like custom image, and you know, the data can be like base 64 width and height and whatever. Now the second thing here, as you see, I'm declaring a time called a user image. And this could be a string or could be a custom image. So I'm, I'm using intersection in here I'm doing Oh, this is either a string or this particular custom object, the image in here is going to be the user image. So it could be a string or a custom image. Now let's see the first bad example, which a lot of us actually use for this particular case scenario, particularly because we got intersection in here. And basically, the compiler can't know which type we're using in by just checking that one. So for example, in here, I got like, this is actually the bad implementation. I'm doing the type in here and declaring the type as I normally would in TypeScript. I have an ID, first name, last name, and the image in here, I remember, oh, look at this. For example, the image in here is going to be our image, which is like having strength. So let's try, for example, when I access this bad user, so I can do bad user dot image dot, okay, it's a string, right? But doesn't have the string methods inside of it. Yes, exactly. Because TypeScript in here, particularly VS Code or ID, you using doesn't know if this is an actual string or not, because exactly what you're given in here, given an intersection. So it's going to take methods that are common between the string and whatever object you provided right over in here. And this, my friends, where the satisfies keyword comes into the play, really nice operator that's going to help you a lot as a task developer. So for example, the good user in here, I have the same thing and I have a string in here. But instead of actually declaring the same user right over here, I'm doing satisfies and I'm doing I user. So that means that's basically going to be the same thing. So all I'm doing in here, I'm declaring the objects first.
first, then I'm using the satisfies and I'm giving it the interface that this object satisfies. And this will tell TypeScript or allow TypeScript to infer the type from the values you provided in here. So for example, if I try to use a user or like for now, the good user and try to do a dot, it's going to see we got all the methods, all the string methods. And if I hover over this, it knows the image is an actual type of a string. And this could be the same thing. For example, if I provided my custom image objects in here and I try to do dot, this will be the same thing. I can actually access those and it knows immediately that this is a type of an I custom image. The fourth mistake that you should avoid is using enums and particularly number based enums. So for example, when you have to take, for instance, this bad state in here, if we declare an enum like has an improper success and fail without specifically telling it the values, this will automatically be inferred as, you know, indices from zero. And obviously you can use this as like in a correct way, whatever. But the bad thing in here, for example, let's say saying like a particular function in here, like this function takes the state and the state in here obviously is going to be like, you know, type of a bad state and this state will actually accept numbers. So when you call this function, you can pass in whatever number, for example, you can pass in 100, which doesn't exactly live in the state anyway. And this will make your code less reliable and worse. Now for the good implementation, what you can do, there is actually two ways you can do this, either you declare a type only without an enum. So you do a type like a good state, and you can, you know, just put them as strings, that's it with an intersection being between or the second thing you can declare an enum, but you have to use strings instead of actual numbers. So for example, if you try to use this new good state with a string that doesn't exist in this one type fail with an error and says argument is not assignable to a parameter good state and whatever. And the fifth mistake is you're not using built in predefined utility types of TypeScript. Now what I mean by utility types, so for example, in here, let's imagine I got a product in here that has ID title and all the stuff in here. And for example, I got a function, all it does, it takes and it allows me to update a product, it takes the ID to the products. And the second thing in here would know is actually it wants to take the updated products. But obviously, when we try to update a product, we don't want to update everything. So we can update literally anything in here, we can either update like the price only or price and rating or only a partial set of the actual objects. So that means we can't just use the I product interface directly, we have to go through some stuff. Obviously, you can do this in a, like a different way, you can create another interface to I product and make all of these are actually like optional, and you remove the ID or better, you can use the utility types. Some of the utility types are like built in, there's actually the partial type, anything inside of that interface actually optional. So it kind of like adds this question mark into it. And there is the omit kind of type in here. And this will actually omit and actually remove that field name from the I products. So if you try to access the updated product in here, try to click on it, it only has price and all of these are actually optionals and it doesn't have the ID. Another really cool predefined type that I use a lot is actually the record type in here. So basically, this one is for example, let's say we have properties, red, green and blue, and we have RGB in here, it could be like, you know, uh, like a two one here, an array of red, green and blue, which are numbers. So I want to declare a color objects in here. So for the color object, I want only to have green, blue, uh, or and red in here as the actual keys of my objects. And the values could be anything from the RGB in here. So how can I do that? So the record predefined utility time is to the rescue. So the record in here, all you do is just do record, you provide it the keys for my objects, and you do the second type in here is whatever values you want to have. So we're gonna have RGB or a simple string. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope you guys enjoy the TypeScript video on all the mistakes that you should avoid to become a better developer.